<clears throat> the Hermetica, The Lost Wisdom of the Pharaohs, by Timothy Freak and Peter Gandhi, read by me, Master Case. Chapter 11, Man is a Marvel. In this chapter, Hermes discusses the nature of mankind and its special relationship with God. God, the cosmos, and man are three great beings. The cosmos is an image of God, and man is an image of the cosmos. Each is made up of many parts, yet each is greater than the sum of these parts. Man was created to be a vehicle through which God could continue to bring order <clears throat> and beauty to the cosmos. <clears throat> All beings have soul, the life force within them, but only human beings possess the power of mind with which we can contemplate the cosmos and come to know God. Human beings are the meeting place of spirit and matter. We have, therefore, a dual nature. We are mind enclosed by a physical body. The human mind is an image of God's mind. It is immortal, eternal, divine, and free. The human body, on the other hand, is mortal and controlled by the laws of destiny which are governed by the stars. Hermes dares to suggest that this unique dual nature even places human beings above the gods. The gods, the heavenly bodies, are confined with their permanent orbits in the heavens and will never move beyond them. A human being, however, may both be on the earth and through the power of his mind ascend to the heavens. In the 20th century, we have used this power to journey literally literally to the stars and reach back through telescopes to see the origin of the universe being both spirit and matter man is an intermediary between these two great principles he is greater than beings who are merely mortal and above those who are purely immortal he shares in the creative power of god he even with his mind creates god's in his own human image. <clears throat> Hermes concludes that man is a marvel worthy of wonder and reverence, a, sen a sentiment that fueled the humanism of the Renaissance. The purpose of human life is to rise above our merely human nature and awaken our divine nature. Human beings have the unique potential to know God, and God's greatest wish is that we fulfill this potential. Man is a marvel. Adam is first, the cosmos is second, and man is third. Adam is one, the cosmos is one, and so is man. For like the cosmos, he is a whole made up of different diverse parts. The maker made man to govern with him. And if man accepts this function fully, he becomes a vehicle of order in the cosmos. Man may know himself and so know the cosmos by being aware that he is an image of Adam and, the co and of the cosmos. He differs from the other living things in that he possesses mind. Through mind, he may commune with the cosmos, which is the second God, and by thought he may come to knowledge of Adam, the one God, the human body, and close his pure mind as if within a walled garden which shelters and secludes it so that, so that it may live in peace. Man has twofold nature. In his body, he is mortal, and in his intelligence, he is immortal. He is exalted above heaven, but is born a slave to destiny. He is bisexual as his father is bisexual. He is sleepless as his father is sleepless. Yet he is dominated by carnal desires and lost in forgetfulness. Of all beings that have soul, only man has a twofold nature. One part called the image of Adam is single, undivided, spiritual, and eternal. The other part is made of the four material elements. One comes from the primal mind. It has the power of the creator and is able to know Adam. The other is put in man by the revolution of the heavens. Man is the most divine of all beings. For amongst all living things, Adam associates with him only, speaking to him in dreams at night, foretelling the future for him. In the flight of birds, the, the boughs of beasts, and the whispering oak, 
all other living things inhabit only one part of the cosmos. Fishes in water, animals on the earth, birds in the air. Man penetrates all of these elements with his sense of sight. He even grasps the heavens. To speak without fear, human beings are above the gods of heaven, or at least they're equal. For the gods will never pass their celestial boundaries and descend to earth, but a man may ascend to heaven, and what is more, he may do so without leaving the earth so vast and expanse can his power encompass. By Adam's will, humankind is compacted of both divinity and mortality. He is more than merely mortal and greater than the purely immortal. Man is a marvel. Do honor and reverence. He takes on the attributes of the gods as if he were one of their number. He is familiar with the gods because he knows he springs from the same source. He raises reverent eyes to heaven above and tends the earth below. He is blessed by being the intermediary. He loves all below him and is loved by all above him. Confident of his divinity, he throws off his solely human nature. He has access to all. His keenness of thought descends to the depths of the sea. Heaven is not too high for the reach of the, his wisdom, his Quick wits penetrate the elements. Air cannot blind his mental vision with its thickest fog. Dense earth cannot impede him. Deep water cannot blur his gaze. Man is all things. Man is everywhere. Man not only receives the light of divine life, but gives it as well. He not only ascends to God, but even creates gods. Just as Adam has willed that the inner man be created in his likeness. So we on earth create the gods in our human image. Is this not worthy of wonder? There are then these three. Adam, cosmos, man. The cosmos is contained by Adam. Man is contained by the cosmos. The cosmos is the son of Adam. Man is the son of the cosmos. And the grandson, so to speak, of Adam. Adam does not ignore man, but acknowledges him fully as he wishes to be fully acknowledged by man, for this alone is man's purpose and salvation, the ascent to heaven and the knowledge of Adam. 11.